Hi, and welcome to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I'm so glad you are here today. Today, we are going to talk about why leaders shouldn't take things personally. This just came up recently with my 10-year-old son, Jack. He and I were talking about an incident that happened at school where he was all worked up about something somebody said to him, and he was quite upset about it and taking it really personally. And after listening to him tell me his story, I said, why do you take what that person said so personally? Does it really matter? There's a little bit of truth to it anyway. Maybe you should look at it as feedback. And he paused. Rather than answering my question, he said, why don't you ever seem bothered by what people say or do, mom? The question caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it, but it made me reflect deeply. What Jack unwittingly touched upon is a crucial trait that every leader should cultivate the ability to not take things personally, the ability to let things slide off their back, the ability to not get taken down by negative comments or negative opinions. And so that's what I want to talk about today, because it's a really powerful thing when you don't take things personally. It makes you so much happier in life. It allows you to take feedback well. It allows you to see things clearly, and it's just a better way to live. So let's jump into why it's so important to let things slide off your back as a leader. So the first one is fostering objectivity. Our role as leaders is to make good decisions based on facts and logic and the best information that we have at the time. And we do this in the best interest for the overall organization. When you take things personally as a leader or don't let things slide off your back, you can have an emotional reaction, which could cloud your judgment. And that would then lead to choices being based on maybe your ego rather than what's best for the team. This is a really important leadership trait because you want to foster objectivity as a leader. And when you do take things personally, you do let your ego get in the way. And it's much harder to make a fact-based decision when you're going, oh, I'm going to do this because, you know, so-and-so said this, or I'm going to prove somebody wrong or whatever it is. So you want to make sure that you are fostering that objectivity. So the next one is maintaining credibility. Leaders who react emotionally to every critique or every slight can appear insecure or even unstable. We are supposed to be tough. We're supposed to be able to hear the hard things. We're supposed to be able to set our egos aside for the best interest of the organization. But if we get upset every time we get tough feedback or we hear something that we don't like, we can shut things down and we can lose our credibility as a leader. So as you know, my mantra is cool, calm, and collected. And this really comes from not taking things personally. When you maintain a calm demeanor in the face of criticism, it helps to establish and retain credibility as being a strong leader who has fortitude to get through anything. Third, it builds a positive culture. If a leader takes every little thing to heart and wears their heart on their sleeve, it can create a tense environment where people are afraid to speak up, where they don't want to share their concerns because a leader is going to get upset. So if you can handle feedback without taking it personally, you will encourage dialogue and trust and make it safe to have a culture of feedback, which is really important if you want to build a dynamic, growing, healthy company, which all leaders should hopefully want to do. Fourth, it helps you preserve energy for what matters most. Leadership is so demanding. It is soul-sucking at times, right? How much you have to give yourself to put into being a good leader. And when you get bogged down by every negative comment or action, it can really drain your reserves. So you want to make sure that you have the energy to tackle the tasks that are at hand, the challenges that truly need attention, But if you're so worried about taking things personally about what somebody said or what somebody did, that takes away your ability to put your full energy and resources into what matters most. Fifth, it also models resiliency for the team. We set the tone for the team. And if you want people to be able to accept your feedback, to hear tough things that they might not want to hear, you need to be able to do the same. You need to show what it's like to be resilient. And by demonstrating this resilience and having this little bit of a thicker skin, leaders can inspire their teams to be more resilient, right? The fact that I don't take things personally definitely makes it easier for my team to not take things personally because, you know what, there's some truth to that. Let's just dive in and fix it or address it or 
clear up miscommunication or lack of clarity and move on. But if I set the tone by taking things personally and getting upset really easily, then it makes it easy for my team to do the same. And that is not what we want. So you really want to model what resilience looks like. And then finally, this is what I think is most important. It makes you happier when you let things go. I find that not taking things personally or being bothered by negative opinions of me makes me so much happier. When you look at feedback as a way to grow and be grateful for it, it's easy to not take it personally. Or you can say, hey, thanks. You know, that might sting a little bit, but I really appreciate you having the courage to tell me and then go work on it, right? Feedback is a gift if you don't take it personally. Additionally, I've also learned that some people are just not going to like me. Not everybody agrees with the way that I run the company. Not everybody agrees with the things that I say and my belief system, my value systems, and that's okay. It has taken years to be okay with that, right? As I've matured as a leader, and I talk about this in my book, The Ownership Mindset, but it's okay that everybody doesn't like you. In fact, if you try to make everybody like you, then you are going to probably lose respect because it will make it more difficult for you to make the tough decisions. So if someone has a negative opinion of you or says negative things about you, let it go, right? Let it go. I have learned that when I take it personally, when someone doesn't like me or says crappy things about me, I give away my power and I refuse to give away my power. And you should refuse to give away your power too. If someone doesn't like you, let it go. You will be so much happier when you just let it roll off your back and move on. This helps in life and in leadership. Now, this is all easier said than done, right? It takes practice not taking things personally. Many, many, many years ago, I absolutely did not have the same level of resiliency that I have now. And as you grow and mature as a leader, as you deal with hard things, you realize that it's okay and you will become more resilient and things will slide off your back a little bit easier. But I do have some tips for you on how to not take things personally when you are in the moment and you are practicing resiliency. The first tip is practice self-awareness, right? Self-awareness is everything. I talk about this again in my book, The Ownership Mindset. It is the foundation for the ownership mindset, that and personal responsibility. But you cannot understand your triggers if you are not practicing self-awareness, if you're not self-reflective and trying to understand, like, why do these things bother me? For me, when people didn't like me and I would try to shapeshift to make sure that they did like me, I understand now that that's a trigger from childhood trauma. And understanding that gives me power to say, that doesn't matter. I'm not that little five-year-old girl anymore. I'm not that 16-year-old girl anymore, right? I know that my self-worth is not based on people liking me. And that only came with self-awareness, with digging deep and understanding myself. When you understand yourself, you can pause and say, ooh, this is a trigger for me. I am going to choose to respond rationally rather than reacting emotionally. And that will help you not take things so personally. Second, seek clarity. Before jumping to conclusions, which we all do as humans, right? We tell ourselves stories about why someone is doing or saying a certain thing. Stop. Ask questions. Be curious. Like, oh, hmm, what did you mean by that? Or, hey, this is a story I'm telling myself about what just happened or what you just said. Can we talk about this? When you seek to understand the context and the intention behind feedback or actions or situation, you will learn that one, maybe you shouldn't be taking it so personally, or two, maybe you'll have a deeper understanding on some things that you can do to change, or maybe you'll gain deeper insight on something that you did to create that situation. And that is powerful information. It allows you to be able to say, ooh, I'm not going to do that anymore. So seek clarity, seek to understand. Three, detach from the outcome. This is hard, but it's a really powerful tool. When you get feedback, it is usually about a task or a role or an outcome, not a reflection of you as a person. So it's really important for you to say, no, this is about the job that I did. I am not my job. This is about something that I said, and I said it poorly. This is not about me as a person, right? Detach from that outcome. Detach from taking it personally. Just look at the feedback and say, okay, I can do something about this. I've told this story many times, but it is the most powerful feedback that I got when one of my colleagues told me that I wasn't a disruptive leader. I was an erratic leader. It hurt. It stung so bad. But when I paused to practice self-reflection and seek some clarity, I realized that there was some truth to it and it allowed me to change. 
And if I would have taken it personally and been very attached to the outcome of this was about me personally, I might not have made that change. And so I tell you this story because it can be life-changing even when you hear some hard things. If you just look at it and say, how can I find some truth in this? But not take it personally. Not say that this is about my personality. It's about something that I can work on. Four, surround yourself with supportive people. This is so important. A strong support system, whether it's family, friends, mentors, colleagues, can offer you a perspective that you might not have. For example, in that erratic comment that I got, I went home and I talked to my husband about it and he said some really powerful things. He was like, look, you move so fast. Most of us cannot keep up with you. And that might feel harsh for somebody. And maybe you should look at, do you need to slow down? Do you need to bring people along better? Do you need to make sure that you're painting what that vision looks like? And then he said, take the good from the feedback and let the rest go. If I would not have had that strong support system that I could come home and talk about that feedback, right, I probably would have taken it personally, but I really appreciated his perspective. And that's exactly what I did. It helped me dramatically change my leadership for the better. And then finally, regularly practice self-reflection. Take time to assess what's going on. Reflect on your actions and behaviors. Reflect on the kind of leader you want to be. Write it down, journal it. Think about it during your meditation. Visualize what you want to be. Get feedback from your colleagues or your trusted teammates. Who am I? Who do I want to be? How do I show up? Constantly reflect. And if you do that, it'll make it so much easier for you to not take things personally, to be able to take negative comments or constructive criticism in stride. Okay, before we move on to the question of the week, I do want to give one counterpoint to all of this because a lot of times people will choose to say, nope, I'm not taking anything personally. I'm not taking any feedback. I'm not interested in what anybody has to say. I'm doing me. (laughs) And while I think it's really important to be yourself and to show up authentically, that does not mean that you should not listen and you should not take feedback. While it is essential for leaders to not take things personally, it is equally important not to swing the pendulum too far and become apathetic to feedback. Constructive criticism is instrumental in personal and organizational growth. Do not be afraid of feedback. Leaders should always remain open, discerning the valuable information, like my husband said, take the good from the feedback and let the rest go, If you ignore or dismiss feedback, it can lead to blind spots, it can lead to stagnation, and it can lead to missed opportunities for improvement. The balance lies in being emotionally resilient while staying receptive to growth. That's the magic balance of not taking things personally. And this is what I tried to explain to Jack. This whole idea of resilience and balance of being able to say, nope, I'm not going to take things personally, but I'm going to learn from it. I'm not sure he fully understood what I was saying. I mean, he is 10 years old after all, but a really remarkable 10-year-old, I have to say. But then again, maybe he did because he replied with this. Well, mom, you do seem a lot happier than most of the other grown-ups I know. I like being happy. And then he has to go play Fortnite video games. (laughs) I realize that this is not just a lesson for leaders, but for all of us. We all need to learn how to navigate the challenges of life with resilience, with a growth mindset, and with letting things slide off of our back. Okay, on to my question of the week. It is time to answer the what are you reading now question. A good friend of mine who I just saw in San Antonio at a YPO event said, what are you reading, Carrie? And I said, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Oh my gosh, I love this story. Why? Shoe Dog is more than just a memoir chronicling the ascent of Nike. It's a vivid portrayal of passion and grit and ingenuity based behind its founder, Phil Knight. Knight's transformation of selling shoes literally from his car to spearheading one of the most iconic brands of our times is a powerful testament to the tenacity and vision that we need as leaders. And knowing that sometimes just the smallest idea, a sprout of an idea, can turn into something absolutely epic. I love how he tells his stories of going through all of the ups and downs from financial hurdles to legal confrontations. The book just offers valuable insights for any leader who is navigating obstacles, which let's face it, pretty much all of us are. I love how he talks about his board of directors as the butt faces. They don't take themselves too seriously and how they played such a critical role in the brand's evolution and garnering worldwide respect, even though 
They were a pretty gnarly bunch of guys helping him build the company. Overall, it is a fantastic story that balances this whole idea of data-driven strategy with gut-driven decision-making and intuition. I love it. It's so good. And the other thing that I really like about it is that Phil is really candid about his fears, his doubts, and his blunders that he made. He was a really terrible manager in the early days. And I really appreciate the vulnerability that he shares in the book. So that's why I think that Shoe Dog is a book that all of us should read. It's really, really, really good. I hope that that inspires you to pick it up. I actually have read it and now I'm listening to it on the audiobook. It's that good. And the audiobook is great as well. It does give more of the inflection of the story, even though Phil does not read it. All right. With that, I will leave you for your day. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you like it, please write a review, share it with a friend, subscribe to it. It helps with the algorithms and I appreciate the support getting the word out. And don't forget to pick up a copy of The Ownership Mindset, my book. It has been a hit so far. I've gotten wonderful feedback on it and some maybe not so great feedback. Like I said, not everybody likes it. So I'm practicing my not taking things personally. (laughs) It's really, really good. I love the growth that comes from doing something really hard, like writing a book and putting it out there for everybody to read and tell you what they think of it. It's such a growth opportunity and I'm loving every second of it. All right, with that, I'll see you next week.